Greetings and salutations, Dota fans. Welcome in for our first play day of this weekend. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Not much left here in the Eastern Division and things taking shape, especially for one of the teams involved here today. Going to be DK taking on Rattlesnake. Now, Team DK, of course, a team that hardly needs an introduction, but Rattlesnake, obviously, they made their appearance at the International 3. Definitely a new look to this team here in the uh, tail end of 2013, I should say. Not the team that we saw in action in Seattle, and this is a must win for them. We'll cover that coming up in just a minute. For now, though, I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers, live here on the floor of our downtown San Francisco studio. I'll be joined, as always, by Ben Merlini Wu and uh, breaking things down. Now, to break things down standing wise, worth mentioning, as, as I said, basically, this is a must win for Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake did get a win under their belt, they're not a part of the, the Goose Egg Club. The, the, a group of teams that currently, despite having a few matches under their belt, has yet to notch a win. But we are well past that halfway point now in Eastern Division play. And more or less, if they want to have a chance to make it into the bubble race playoffs, there's more or less no chance that they're, well, there is no more or less to it. There is no chance that they're going to be able to contend for that direct seeding into Las Vegas. LGD China currently the team most favored for that. But uh, yeah, if they want to have a chance to make it into the bubble race playoffs, they're going to have to win today and every day looking forward. We're going to take a look at the standings to see where all of these teams shape up and match up against each other in relation to each other here in the Eastern Division. As I said, LGD, they've played six of their seven matches. They're sitting at 6-0, and perfect right now, and the by far the front runners to walk away with uh, the direct seed to our grand finals in Las Vegas coming up in January. Invictus Gaming has certainly looked good as well. They're sitting at 4-1, and one, then Team DK at 3-1. Tong Fu is currently nestled in that fourth place position, but one gets the impression that they're not going to be there for long. Beachy Gaming has two series coming up tonight. They're sitting at 2-1, and one, virtually tied in everything but points with uh, Tong Fu. Tong Fu has played six matches compared to Vici's three. So if Vici's able to get a win here, they're going to guarantee themselves a tie with Tong Fu, even if Tong Fu wins their last match. And really after that, all of the other teams in the back just have so many more matches to play. Very unlikely that Tong Fu is going to uh, end up in the top half of our standings. Now, talking briefly about Rattlesnake again, one and three right now. They played four matches. They do have one win under their belt, avoided going with the goose eggs that we see plaguing LGD International and Rising Stars. When you look at the, the math involved with this, Rattlesnake, again, with only three matches left to play. They've played four of their seven so far. If they win out, they have the possibility to get four wins under their belt. They can't allow DK to get to that, uh, to that number first with this match right now. Otherwise, again, with Vici having two matches to play on top of another two after that, just very unlikely that Rattlesnake is going to have a chance to make the playoffs if they don't win out starting here tonight. But certainly going to be a big test, and I'll tell you why. We'll take a look at Team DK's lineup. Full of absolute all-stars. Names that anyone who knows Dota is going to recognize. Of course, Burning in the carry position, the team leader and, Ken, and team captain. Ice 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 holds down the off lane with Mushi, the reformed carry, now leading the way in mid for DK. Lanham, the support in jungle, and X out in the hard support position now. Rattlesnake, again, we'll look at their lineup as well and how they match up. Rattlesnake, a team that... I mean, they have talent. You look at these names, you know them. You know how good they can be. Lubo in particular. We've seen him have some outstanding performances, even in some of the losses they've taken. Icy holds down the offlane. Johnny, a mid that I think is very often underrated, has some decision-making problems, occasionally some consistency issues, but a hero, that, or a player, I should say, that you don't want to fall asleep on. Lin, of course, in the support jungle position, and Sag out in the hard support. So they have talent. They have a little bit of star power of their own, and they're going to have to get a big upset victory under their belt right here and right now against Team DK if they want to have a shot to continue any chance of success here in the Eastern Division of the HyperX D2L. Once again, I'm your host, Aaron AC Chambers, Ben Merlini Wu, going to be joining us again for the insight and analysis. We'll have game one, the draft already underway, jumping right into that in just a moment or two. Stick with us, guys. We'll be right back.
And welcome in the draft already more than halfway complete here in game one to get things going. DK taking on Invictus Gaming. Now, there will be two appearances from DK tonight as well. So this is their first one. Certainly want to get a win here. And let's be honest, they're very well favored in the breakdown. DK exactly why they're so well favored and as well as to uh, to lend the insider analysis, especially to this drafting phase. Welcome in once again, as always, Ben Merlini Wu. And Ben, I mean, we're now well through the halfway point of our uh, of our Eastern Division, and things are really beginning to take shape. DK, though, I mean, let's be honest, they they were expected to be an unassailable juggernaut, uh, not just in our tournament, but in all. They have been taking some losses here and there. They've been splitting some series. They've been, uh, they took their first loss in a long time uh, in Eastern Division play here in the D2L not long ago. They're just not really living up to the hype, if we're to be honest. Yeah, I certainly would agree with you on that. They were like living up to the hype pre 6.79, but as soon as the patch hit, they just seemed out of form, and mm -hmm. they're just not as fast of that to other team as other teams. I think maybe it has to do with uh, a lot of the team chemistry. Maybe some of them want to play one specific style, and they're just not really all on the same page, which is a little bit unfortunate uh, because they don't live up to the hype. But it does lead to better competition competition because they were just simply dominating a lot of the other teams uh, prior to the patch. But since they've only been together for uh, only a few months now, and a lot of the other teams have been together for at least a year. Um, I think that it's just a chemistry thing. I don't. It's definitely not a skill thing. These players are just massively, incredibly individually skilled. DK's well, taking a look at the draft so far, I mean, we can see the the havoc that six point seven nine has re wrecked in, in terms of what you can expect to see coming out in these drafts. Obviously, seeing the Death Prophet and the Invoker. Invoker certainly not all that crazy of a hero. Death Prophet, though. Talk. Let's talk a bit about her. She won out big in six point seven nine. Had both a direct buff as well as an indirect buff in the form of a bug fix involving how much damage the spirits from her ulti did. So she's actually become an insanely fast pusher. And when you look at now Rattlesnake finishing up their lineup, I really like the way they're approaching this game one against DK. They've got everything you need for good push. They've got a Venomancer with Plague Wards, the 1-1 one, one max Plague Wards uh, approach, certainly the most popular build with him. Chen, of course, his push potential can't be underestimated in any situation. Then you've got Juggernaut with Healing Ward, Death Prophet with their ulti, and Clockwork giving you that reach, that ability to engage on an enemy who is set up behind behind their own lines, behind their own early towers, really makes this an unbelievably strong push composition. DK has some answers there. I'll let you break that down, but I like what Rattlesnake's doing here. They know they're going to be the underdogs. They know they're not quite on the same level as DK, so go with something that's relatively easy to execute. Get all your guns facing forward and try to make things work that way. Yeah, it's a very good idea for Rattlesnake to go for this sort of all-out early game lineup, and the odds in this favor are heavily favored DK 87% to 13 Five that is just uh, 6 to 7 to 1 which is really bad odds if anyone's betting rares but uh, with this sort of lineup they could potentially take a game maybe two off um, DK is, is unlikely they have Prepare decent anti-push invoker if he goes quas wex uh, I don't know how often I as I studs this um, but he's a flexible I've, I've seen him play invoker so many times probably the best invoker um, maybe besides Dendi, I don't know. Dendi and um, Ice 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 are like the best invokers in competitive, and um, we've just seen some incredible play out of him. So I think he'll be able to stall pushes. They have uh, Earthshaker, too, with um, Fissure. If he gets a blink, I think it's pretty much going to be... If he gets a blink in, like let's say, like 15 minutes or less, it's probably going to be GG. Um, and... Crystal Maiden, not the greatest, but it does give them some early game presence that they need. And they have Magnus. But I saw Mushi's Magnus the other day versus Vici. Or was it Vici? I believe it was Vici. And they just yeah. got absolutely rolled. Um, and a lot of it did have to do with his Magnus. Uh, he just, like, BKB too early sometimes. He didn't hit the really clutch RPs. And um, maybe if they gave, like, a more Mushi-ish snowball type of hero to him, then... Um, they would have won out, but that was just very disheartening to see his Magnus get crushed like that. Absolutely. I mean, Magnus, one of those heroes that fell out of competitive, was first pick, first ban material. Still gets picked somewhat by some teams that prefer the hero, but uh, as you said, a hero that can easily get behind. and Just so hard to push That's into, though, between Shockwave and the power of reverse polarity as initiation slash counter initiation. DK certainly has the tools to deal with this. But uh, Rattlesnake, I mean, really, when it comes to heavy push, especially if you're talking pre-20 push, they've got it in spades. Let's run through the lineup, see who's handling who. As you mentioned, Mushi going to be playing on our 
Magnificent Magnoceros, Magnus, setting up shop here in mid. We'll have Lanham playing on the Earthshaker. He's hanging out near mid, at least for the moment. Invoker's going to be heading to the off lane all by his lonesome. That's going to be Ice 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 playing on that hero with Burning. Currently under cover of an Invis rune, still blocking the creeps, playing on the Anti-Mage. You don't think there's any surprise there, and certainly we'll be keeping an eye on Burning's Anti-Mage. Uh, depends on who you ask, but usually, if you want to talk about the best AMs in the pl on the planet, DK has burning or uh, i should say burning certainly has his name in that discussion that every time as one of the best if not the best so mmy will be uh jungling our crystal maiden she'll be looking to roam and get uh, get moving early to free up some space for that animage on the other side of the river icy will be playing on our clockwork we're gonna have juggernaut played by luo luo's had some uh outstanding performances here and there unfortunately rattlesnake just having some problems in and uh, closing these games out once they get late. one 2 one will be playing our surprise pick, the Death Prophet here in mid. And Again, really looking forward to how they're going to end up uh, utilizing her new and improved ultimate now in 6.79. Johnny playing on the chin, and Venomancer will be handled by SAG. Yeah, I think that Death Prophet, she was strong in 6.78, just no one used her, no one really adventured enough to use her. I also think it was uh, a lot of the, because of the mass BKBs, her silence is very useless uh, versus mass BKBs and Carrion Swarm is to Crypt Swarm, rather. Exorcism, though, getting buffed will be a good solution to that. We see a smoke ink already for Lanham and MMY. Uh, Urshik or MMY is already level two and a half. I don't know where he picked up those levels, but here we go. Like gonna, gonna be a fall. fissure cutting off Icy Lan. I'm gonna. Oh, he actually got him on the wrong side. Don't think it's gonna matter. Nope. There's a nice frostbite and your first blood. first blood. Gonna go to DK. Very well timed, well executed. I mean, it's really easy to underestimate just how quickly and efficiently Crystal Maiden can jungle. Just starting out with Frostbite, she can actually get a very quick level two, and that's ex we saw just how potent that can be, especially when you have another excellent yeah. roamer. She's higher level than the Clockwork right now. Yeah, they're they're gonna go on him again. I'm pretty sure uh, Earthshaker needs a little bit more yep. mana though, but he's taking so many creeps right now. Yeah, there's a cold snap, a little bit of extra uh, damage. Lanham has enough for a fissure now, and Icy could be in trouble if he comes up. There's lane. gonna be the frostbite, and one more fissure to lock him in. A couple of auto attacks, he'll drop the cogs. That might buy him enough time to get away, and it will. But continuing to be under serious assault here, and I mean, we see it all the time. Clockwork's one of those heroes who doesn't have to be super over leveled to be effective. But when he gets underleveled, he really can't have problems having the effect you want him to have. He just is not that survivor. He's going to shut down Bushi in mid. Uh, they need to hit a silence, though, I think. Um, Death Prophet does not actually have silence yet, but it's going to be pretty difficult to kill the Magnus without silence because the stun from Centaur Conqueror is unreliable and he can just skewer out of the slow. So, unless he's like out here, I don't expect uh, Magnus to die, but it looks like they're actually going top. So, yeah, I, I think it's definitely the right idea. Not going for it. Magnus is a very, very low probability. Kill. Going to give Icy a little bit of help. Currently, we see Ice 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 continuing to just farm away. He's oh, certainly he's, in good position. Well, what is he doing over here? He's like tanking the creep wave. Oh, he actually just wants the creep wave to be over here. I think it's a pretty smart move. Uh, I mean, he's pretty safe like back here, but if he pulls the creeps back, then they're going to be pushed out and he'll be vulnerable. Lanham and MMY. They, they spot him, though, with a sword. We'll yeah. see, Johnny. Lanham and MMY both still hanging around mid. And already Crystal Maiden to level 3. We can see she is going with the one 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 approach. We'll see if she wants to go ahead and put more points in Arcane or currently just the value point stuck in there. I'm pretty sure it was DK. It was either DK or IG we saw do that earlier. Sag trying to get position on Ice Ice Ice. He does. He is going with a Wex build, so we'll have uh, the ability to QQ walk away if needed. But Invis Room going to be picked up by Lanham, it looks like. Nope, actually just going to hold it for Mushi. Yeah, it's a really good idea for Invoker to go Quas Wex versus push strategies and early five on fives. You definitely want to go Quas Wex. Exorb build is much better if it's a farmy split pushy kind of game because you can still help your team out with sun strikes. But sun strike is like almost absolutely useless in a five on five. Meteor's not that great either since it's such a long cooldown. Quas Wex by far does the pure inner type push build, and Ice 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 knows that. Um, he, or he already has his phase boots up, and he didn't go a base damage build. He actually started off with the boots first, which is not too bad if you're in the off lane. They could easily sent clockwork on Lua gonna end up and dropping here in this bottom lane got frostbitten one good blink and that'll get burning some much needed gold was actually going to point out we haven't talked a whole lot about it just how much he's been struggling down in that bottom lane currently sitting very near the bottom of the cs board just eight last hits for him so getting some much needed experience and a, and a nice surge of gold as the rotation from mmy very timely 
Yeah, he has boost first too. So like the DK is very adaptive to what the opponent's gonna do. Like if they have a juggernaut, it's very, very beneficial to have boost early. He also skilled two points of mana break early. He wasn't able to spin out of the frostbite and then he died there. So DK, they're they're just playing very smart right now in this early game. They're not supposed to win this early game. Their lanes like aren't that great. Mag isn't that great of a lane controller, solo invoker off lane, like solo anti mage on bottom. None of these are strong lanes, but their skill builds, their decision making is uh, very spot on, and they're moving around their map from the two supports. We can see Burning playing a little bit more bravely now. MMY, Lanham, and Mushi all beginning to group up here in mid. And you get the impression, I mean, we're just six minutes in, but DK knows there's going to be a lot more movement coming out of Rattlesnake. They're going to want to get that Shin involved uh, as quickly as they can, and we can see High Size Size doing what he can to slow down his farm uh, with a little bit of tornado action. But for right now, MMY is actually level four and a half and going to get a stack on the Ancients, or at least try to do so. But I'm, you know, this is going to be one of those games where for sure Rattlesnake has to hit their timing window. They can't afford to just kind of sit around and take this early game slow. They need to make Watch something IC. happen. He's number six. They might, something might happen on bottom if Matt tries to go for the rune. There's a hook on the Burning. Burning able to blink away before the silence. So one, two, one. Little slow on the trigger that time. And Burning makes it away safely. They don't have enough damage to kill him anyways. Even if the silence had hit, he has one point of mana shield. He can still blink through battery cells. So yeah, that was also a very low probability kill. Sad gets tornadoed on top, but nothing to follow up. We got three up here. EMP will connect and take away most of that mana. That's going to be something that Luo has to deal with. Is just the ability for DK to burn his mana off between the Animage and between EMP coming out of Ice Ice Ice. A Juggernaut without... A uh, fair amount of farm, and certainly without his abilities in the early game. It's just not going to be that effective. Certainly his healing world or ward will still help a lot with the push, but just not going to have that damage. I think that could end up being the story of the early game. Will Rattlesnake have the damage they need to go with the push potential they have? You need, you generally need two arcane boots. When uh, Invoker was really popular before his base damage got nerfed, uh, Quaswex was by far the most popular build. And generally, you need two, probably three arcane boots if you wanted to push because the Tornado EMP is just way too strong. He already uses EMP Luo Force to uh, Blade Fury, so he doesn't uh, lose all his mana. So now he doesn't even have enough mana for Omni Slash. So if Chen and uh, Vino do actually manage to catch the Ice Ice Ice, he can probably still survive. He can just TP away. Burning doing what Burning does has slowly begun to cut down that deficit in terms of the CS gap. He's at 27. Another smoke on top. Watch this. Yep. Almost caught up to the Invoker and the Juggernaut. We can see them moving through the river. They're going to double Dyer's back around towards the Secret Shop. Going to try to get a dive off on Ice Ice Ice. Again, Quaswex build. He will have QQ walk. Do they have detection? They do not. So if they decide to try and dive him, going to be chancy. Looks like they might be more Dyer's interested in making something tower, happen in mid, attack. but that's a minefield. The MMY and Lanham both hanging around. Could get ugly real quick, especially with the mag at level 8. Yeah, there's no way to stop their RP. Oh, there's going to be a Gale. Catches Mushi. They're going to try to engage on him. He's at half health. We'll eat a test of faith as he skewers to the high ground. Land him there with a well-placed fissure. Buys his buddy time. Looked like Mushi would have gotten away anyway, but now the rotation from Ice 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 moving into the river. That's going to be enough to force Rattlesnake back into a defensive position. Yeah, DK is doing a very good job of stalling the game. They just need to stall the push as long as possible, and they're doing a very good job of it. Um, Invoker just delaying his mana. If they, like... Um, if they go back home to heal, they're going to have to uh, come back to defend their towers. Same with burning on bottom. He burned all of Clockwork's mana, and he just has to go home to heal just simply because he has no mana. And they're too poor for Arcane Boost right now, and it's like just slightly too early for them to push. Chen is still only level 3. Venomancer with level 2 Plague right now. That's not strong enough. So yeah. they're like, normally you'd be able to push around this time. Like Chen usually hits level 5 or 6 around this time. Uh, Death Prophet is actually the one who's doing the best, but uh, their main like pushers are aren't, aren't really, um, their supports are just too under level to five man right now and Invoker and Magnus will just absolutely tear them apart. So Rattlesnake, I like, they, they want to push soon, but they can't. So I'm not exactly sure what they're going to do because if they push and their first push fails and they get like three zeroed or three one or something like that in a team fight, it's going to look very, very bad for them for the rest of the game. So I don't think that's a risk they want to take this early. Yeah, Another I agree smoke. with you. Uh, the, the, the problem... The problem they have is, and we see bottom. getting dove and a man avoids there enough to clean that up. Smoke will be rotating around from Rattlesnake. They're going to try to make something happen, but again, Ice 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 is just such a tough target to lock down without direct detection. They do have a sentry now, so they'll have a chance. Lanham has rotated down to the tier two top, though, so Ice 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 will have help. They're going to try to wait on him to come out. I see. Nope. Never mind. Going to hook right under the tower. Gets down the cogs. There's the EMP down, and off goes the dust as well. 
can they get him? They... He's got him down pretty low. There's a nice Fisher that slows down Luo. He tries to QQ walk away, unable to do so. So Johnny, being involved in that fight, certainly helped things out. Mushi has a haste rune now. Going to skewer up 1-2-1 one, one, and leave him hanging out near the Ogre Bruiser and company. That's going to force a TP out. So nice cheeky little play to buy himself some time. But either way, DK finally gives up one Rattlesnake on the board, making 3-1. to one. Here comes the push. Um... Death Prophet is level 8 right now. She has Arcane Boots. This is the time. This is the opportunity that they're looking for. Can they delay this? Because it's going to be a very slippery slope after they lose the first tower. Then another Arcane Boots will be up. So this is very important for them to defend. They still have the Glyph. I totally think they should defend this at all costs. Yep. Looks like they've got four in position. There's the EMP to help ward them off. Blink Tiger's almost done on Mushi. F literally 15 gold, all he needs. So he could just wait on passive gold. And if they want to go ahead and defend it and fly the Blink Tiger out, I would imagine. That's what they'll be doing, and nope, never mind. Looks like has yet to pick it up. Has the gold to do so. QQ walk from ice, ice, ice. Here we go. Fissure catches a couple. There's a shock wave to help span this wave out a little bit more. And Death Prophet's ulti more or less wasted. In the meantime, Burning has been split pushing down bottom tower. Now he's going to spit out Sag. Sag gets off a well-placed Gale that slows him down. Mag does pick up his blink, so it looks like we will have another lull in the action. But this really doesn't bode well for Rattlesnake. I mean, we're at almost 12 minutes in. This is definitely a 15 to 20 minute lineup where they want to just feel impossible to deal with and already DK showing they can deal with it just fine. Yeah, they're really good at delaying the push and I mean none of the towers are even below half. They use the glyph but they're not in any form to push right now. Uh, Death Prophet no mech up. Chen's still sitting at level 5 with only uh, two creeps like and one of them's about to die right now. Possibly both and like DK just needs to keep stalling and let burning farm up. Burning I would say he's definitely the best AM uh, player in competitive right now. His farm is usually just phenomenal. And he's sitting at 101, 61 CS after struggling early game. And things are looking really dicey for Rattlesnake. They have to push down towers very, very soon. They have to fight five on five. They cannot win the farm war. They cannot win the split push war at all. Not versus DK, not with this early game lead that they have. Burning continuing to just farm right in the face of Veno. Veno, of course, going to be able to shut down or at least slow down. That push in bottom, as we see, Sag has gone with the max Plague Wards build. He's got two points in the Gale, but three in the Plague Wards as well. So very difficult to push into that once he digs his heels in. In the meantime, that looks like DK quite happy to force an engagement up here at top. Now, Chin is going to be rotating over. Still not level six. He is quite far behind where you want your Chin to be in a push composition like this. 13 minutes in and still looking for Hand of God. Definitely not something you really afford to do, especially... When you have a team that really needs to draw these fights out a little bit. These are teams, They're, I mean... They might get a free tower in mid, though. They, I don't know what DK's going to do about this. They either need to get a tower on top or respond to this. Yep, they're going to go ahead and abandon top. Mushi did TP there using the Shockwave, of course, to force this back out. Death Prophet's ulti still has about half time left on him, but unable to really fully commit to it. So, 1-2-1, one, one, I mean, he's doing what his hero should be doing, which is helping to push down with Rolti, but unfortunately, the movement of DK just a little too good. Really only getting a small percentage of damage out of those ghosts that, that he would like to get. And there's going to be an RP, skewering him right back, following it up with Crystal Maiden and Earthshaker there to help clean up shop. Burning shows his face as well, make it 4-1, to one, and... Rattlesnake just flat out seems like they can't really get things going. They just can't get their game plan in action. They cannot. It, th with the blink up on Magnus now, it's just way too dangerous to group of this five. And we can already see that DK is doing a very good job of fending off the split push. Their heroes are just very good at uh, responding to where Rattlesnake is. They have this very offensive ward up top. If they see them gather up, they just um, gather up at a T1 and catch them off guard with a oh, blink. Oh, beautiful chain oh, of initiation geez. to lock down Luo. Really Fissure led things on. Blink, uh, blink skewer as well as the uh, cold snap and really couldn't ask them for a, a better a better mode of execution. They're going to go ahead and take the tier one off of that as well. And 14 minutes in, and this is not when DK should be winning in this game. And they aren't, they aren't just winning, they're dominating really. Yeah, it's uh, the first tower in favor of DK is very, very surprising to me if you look at the draft. Um, it was very smart by um, Ice 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 up here, too. He used his EMP. He knew it wouldn't hit because he would just spin out of it, but that just leaves him vulnerable to a skewer and cold snap initiate later. A Rattlesnake definitely feeling the pressure right now, trying to smoke gank, but can they really kill Burning? They have to use Exorcism if they want to kill him, and they have to hit a Silence and a hook shot. That's another very low probability gank by Rattlesnake, and they've only gotten one kill this game. They've been... 
they've burned through, I believe, four smokes already, mm -hmm. um, and they've gotten zero kills out of it. That just shows you how well prepared they are. And Rattlesnake, they're just not very good at finding the targets. There's not really any good targets, though. Invoker has Tornado. He has um, Ghost Walk 2. Magnus just skewered away from the Chen and Vino gang. And AM can just blink away. So DK's draft is very good at handling this pressure. Right now, you kind of get the impression that Rattlesnake's already beginning to feel a real sense of urgency, as they should. Five to one uh, in terms of kills. The gold, they're already trailing. They're already trailing 4,000 gold. The experience is up around 3,000, which is considerable at these levels. Chin finally did hit level six, but really, I don't think they can afford to fail another push. I mean, they just are going to run out of time. Burning's Animage is going to have his B his uh, Battle Fury up basically right now. All he need yeah, he has it right now if he wants it. He just needs the Void Stone to complete the Perseverance. So once he starts uh, farming up in the jungle at 16 minutes, there's not going to be a whole lot uh, the Rattlestick can do to shut it down. They do take a tower, though, so that certainly gets them moving in the right direction. Yeah, this is very good for them. I think that DK should have had a ward like over here in this area to see if they're barreling down mid. They were just unprepared for that. Like if one person TPs, like a Magnus RPs them, there's nothing to follow up. So uh, I think it's a very, uh, very smart move by Rattlesnake. They finally take down their first tower 16 minutes in the game, and now they're doing Roshan, and they have no vision right now. They need, uh, oh, Saget. Looks like he's gonna fall though. DK. Managing to actually, uh, yeah, managing to pick Sag off. In the meantime, the Roche attempt well underway. This is going to be a nice little coup for Rattlesnake. Having the Alpha Wolf there for the bonus damage DD on Death Prophet. Making this go a bit quicker than it would normally. So uh, this age is going to be pretty much the make or break for them, I think. They can afford to, they can't really afford to lose another fight. And they're going to have their chance right now. Mushi has RP up and ready to go this tier one bottom oh they're gonna hook in and catch two burning and land and both caught out can they silence him he got them both burning next to be cleaned up with omni slash and that's exactly the catalyst rattlesnake needed catching dk asleep at the wheel there's gonna be a frostbite but the blade fury out of it gales there just in case wasn't even needed three for nil the turnaround and rattlesnake finally flexing their muscles a bit we can see ice 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 is continuing to farm up elsewhere so they're at least getting him a little bit of gold but a fantastic fight, or a fantastic win there, and a great hook to lead things off from Icy. Yeah, that was just um, Lonem being completely out of position. You cannot get hooked as an Earthshaker. If you get hooked, you probably lose a team fight unless Mushi is like really, really fast with a counter RP or Ice Ice is really fast with a counter EMP. But that is completely Earthshaker's fault. AM is supposed to be up there. He's supposed to be tanking. He's supposed to be baiting out spells. He has treads. He has magic shield. He should be able to survive until his team uh, responds. But Lonem, that was just a very, very costly mistake. That puts Rattlesnake right back in the game right now. Gold lead is back to zero. And they didn't even get the tower out of that. They might, uh, and Rattlesnake might even get two towers out of this. There we go. There's the ulti. Oh, beautiful skewer. RP on the one, two, one. Can they clean him up? Got to get the ulti off. And able to make it away and mech through it at least a little bit longer. Lonham will be the next to be cleaned up. There's a missed hook right into Luo's back. They trade one for one. Shaker for the Death Prophet. With the loss of the DP, though, they did lose their mechanism. That might be enough to force DK to, uh, to force uh, Rattlesnake to back off as DK comes charging back out. They kept the Death Prophet up for a little while. She got some decent damage out of her ult. Oh, they might see Icy right now. Uh, let's see. He's, he's got his cogs if he needs it. In the meantime, AM does manage to take a tower there in mid. DK continuing to look for a target. They're not going to be able to find anyone but Icy. He's left all by his lonesome. Has a TP, though, if he wants to use it. And poked his nose out. Looks like he will be heading out. Crystal Maiden grabbing up our first Midas of the game. That'll be picked up just short in 19 minutes. That was a really smart RP by Mushi. Sure, you might be like, oh, man, one-man RP, that's a waste. But it just completely destroyed their push. Yep. And I think Rattlesnake probably should have given the Aegis to Death Prophet because Death Prophet is usually the one that's just going to be up in the front, like beating on the tower, similar to how Burning is. So I don't think they should have given it to Juggernaut. Juggernaut is just like whatever. He's here, there for the healing ward. Um, he his, he doesn't really do that much damage with the Omni Slash right now. Uh, and Blade Fury is like mess, so um, I don't think it was the right idea to give it to them. But yeah, it was a really smart RP by Mushi, being able to just completely stop their push by killing the important hero. Death Prophet is the one single most important hero on Rattlesnake right now. Uh, like on this team fight, if she doesn't get her silence off, they're able to counter initiate. So um, it's really important that she stays up, not only for the ghosts, but one two one in trouble ball. in mid. There's a Fisher to follow up after the blink skewer. Another big kill, and they can't afford to have their Death Prophet dropping like this. Now, DK, if they want to, have the option of shoving through mid. 
Uh, they're hanging around. Looks like they're going to go ahead and disperse once again, though. So not going to be taking any chances. The problem they're running into, though, is burning is beginning to do what burning does. He's sitting at 130 CS, give or take. We're 20 minutes in. The gold, we can see, actually dipped in favor of Rattlesnake. But after that, uh, after their big win, it went in their favor, plus the Roshan. But they had that lost fight. Now Burning's farm is beginning to kick in as he has picked up that Battle Fury. Yeah, Mushi has four staff to... Um... Invoker has four staff going Orchid next. They have a Vlad's up on Burning. They are ready to fight if Rattlesnake tries to fight again, but they absolutely cannot fight if Death Prophet gets picked off again. And the Aegis is going to be down in about two minutes' time, too. So they have a small window of opportunity to push, but it's just very, very risky. And that was only a one man RP. If it's like a two or three man RP, the fight just completely goes to crap for Rattlesnake. Uh, Sag, we haven't really seen the Venomancer do too much this game, and we've seen him picked very highly, but he's 0, 2, and 3 right now. He he like drops his wards and I don't even I don't even think he's dropped his ultimate in this game, but he's gotten picked off a few times. He hasn't been able to split push very effectively, so I'm I think he's like good in certain push strategies, but in this particular game he does not seem to be a very effective hero. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, the thing about Venno is he's good at a lot of things. You can play him defensively, you can play him offensively. He's a great roamer just because of the strength of Gale even after it's well, yeah, I guess you would call it a rework. I wouldn't even call it a full out nerf, but um, you can play him a lot of different ways, but he is a hero that you kind of need to get a lot out of. He They're doesn't going for burning. They need a silence on him. They they know he's there. Able to TP away. Yep, one two one. Unable to catch up. In the meantime, the rest of DK moving down mid, and we actually see the Venos picked up a Necro book, so he's going to be able to add a little bit more. Here's a big four man smoke coming out of this mid position, though. They're going to go ahead and. Follow Burning as Burning teleported down to bottom. Now he's going to go ahead and try to split push or at least serve as bait as if he's split pushing that bottom lane. And this could be a huge win for DK now. Rattlesnake not really in position to defend this. They're going to send one at the moment. That's going to be Luo. And he's going to be... Uh -oh. He has Aegis, though. Yep. Can they pick him off in time? He's going to be crossing right in front. Uh, Luo shows himself. Burning. Up oh, there we go. There's the Fisher and the EMP and the Cold Snap. He's going to try to Blade Fury out and will be able to do so. DK, though, should be able to take this tower uncontested, and they will. Why is Ice 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 the only one hitting on the tower? He's like, come on, guys, help me out. And Anti Mage will get the tower. So he's that much closer to his Manta style. And, like, meanwhile, Rattlesnake not really doing anything. They're, like, pushing top very, very slowly. But they lost a the T2 before they even started touching the T1. Yep. And DK just much faster at moving around the map. They're going to pressure the T3. No reason not to. They got to force a reaction. And this is one of the big weaknesses of a Chin, by the way. Jin is not a hero that can afford to not be setting the pace. He can't just teleport home to try and help out. He has to walk, otherwise he leaves all of his creeps behind. And yeah, he can contribute Hand of God globally. But DK is going to be able to do things like this, like pressure the Tier 3 and dare Rattlesnake to come back and try to fight 4 on 5 if they happen to have 5 there. And to be honest, burning with a Yasha and a Vlad's up already, he's ready to fight. He, this does not have to be a 45-minute oh, anyway. They might skewer him back. And... Ooh, yeah, there it is. Got him onto the high ground. And that, yeah, that's just unfortunate. There's really no other word for it. They're not going to be able to fight reliably at all. They're rotating over now. Venomancer with his Necro book. The clock, uh, just level 11. I mean, he's got level 2 hook and all that. But I'm actually surprised DK's not trying to force the issue off of that. This just really is not a game in which Rattlesnake can fight unless they have all five. Looks like they're just prioritizing getting burning big, though. Yeah, they don't have to force the issue. They have the late game. They have the better split push, and they have uh, the better team fight at this point. Maybe, like, 10 minutes ago, Rattlesnake had the better team fight with Exorcism, but now that the Blink Daggers are online for two of the heroes, um, it's just really, really bad for Rattlesnake. The gold difference is only, like, 7,000, which is, I mean, it's big, but it's not, like, um, it's, it's generally not, like, oh, my God, 7,000, it's over, but versus with, with this sort of lineup, they're just, like, running around trying to get something to happen, and this Chen has really done anything either we talked about the or i talked about the vino like not really doing that much johnny really hasn't done that much either on the chen he's one zero and two he's like only taking out two towers right now sure he helped them get like the mid t1 as well as the roshan but other than that i mean there are other heroes for that right like a uh, lycanthrope for example would have right. um, served better because he can double his linking but chen really loses his effectiveness effectiveness around this time he's level 9 24 minutes in that is uh, the lowest level, like the lowest level on DK is level 9 on the Earthshaker, but he has Arcane and Blink, and that's all the items he needs. Burning actually just blinked into a lot of trouble here. He will be able to blink out. Blinked right on top of Rattlesnake as they were farming their own jungle. In the meantime, though, we've got four from DK moving down mid. Only Luo's there to defend. Luo with his Manta style done will be contributing a bit more 
uh, with that juggernaut. Problem is, we see Ice 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 actually picked himself up an Orkin. Not only is that going to help him in terms of his right-click damage output, but much more importantly, just the ability to take heroes like Death Prophet and Juggernaut, take their entire skill set out if you're able to get the jump on them, makes things a big problem. And with that four staff, certainly not going to be a problem for uh, Ice 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 to initiate these fights and take one target out of the fight right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And DK just still playing defensively, waiting for AM get, to get his Manta style. Once they get the Manta style, I think they feel very comfortable taking a 5-on-5, five five, but there's still no reason to take that risk. Rattlestick just getting outfarmed around the map right now. Their lack of mobility with Chen clearly showing. Uh, are they going to smoke up pretty soon? They don't. I don't think they have any more smokes, but they're just waiting for something bad to happen. Luo? <laughs> Luo, right near the Roche pit. Roche will be back up in just about a minute or so. And here we go. They're going to go ahead and engage as we see the skewer onto Sag. Sag brought back. The Omni Slash did go off. Buy back from Earth Shaker. In the meantime, Luo using Blade Fear. There's a hook that's off the mark. Was aimed for burning. Burning able to blink away. However, netted down from the Troll Warlord. There's going to be a deafening blast. And the Centaur will be caught out. So a bit of an odd exchange there as DK tried to take that fight. RP wasn't spent, though, so Mushi still has the biggest round in his barrel. And ready to go. As you said, the Manta done on burning now. Really no reason for them not to feel confident to take these fights. Especially if Ice Ice, Ice, can, Ice can get the jump on this Death Prophet before she gets Exorcism off. Tier 2 drops for free. And let's see if they want to push through. 1-2-1 one, one, using Crimson. I think they just take Roshan right now. Yeah. If, if Rattlesnake wants to find it right now, they're going to be at a really big disadvantage. And they might lose a T1. Oh, actually, no, Magnus is going to go there right now. But I think AM can solo it with Empower and Vlads. They should be able to do it. DK nope. falling back. Did they even check the Roche pit? Mm, I'm not sure. I don't think they have yet. They're hovering around. Surely they'll stick their nose in there in a minute. But for now, continuing to just play defensive. Mushing. He's got 2,300 gold in the bank. And, I mean, really just across the board. I mean, we can check the net worth tab. At this point, the Annie Mage has 5,000 net worth more than the closest on the enemy team, which is the Juggernaut. And three of the top four in terms of net worth all belonging to DK would say that they, uh, to put it mildly, they've weathered Here's this smoke. early game storm fairly well. Here we go. Smoke out of Rattlesnake. They're going to move down into the river. We see the tornado checking the Roche pit. And right in they go. And DK in position to challenge this if they want. Doesn't look like they think it's going on, though. That's a smart healing ward up, up the hill. I've not seen that before. Roche they at about half health. Yep, now they're going to know. Here we go. Mushi the man we're going to want to watch. Trying to get into position. I still think they can take a fight even with the Aegis because they're all clumped. If he gets like a two or three man RP, I think they can take it. But and it's a little bit risky. They don't really have vision right now now that uh, Anti-Mage's um, Manta is down. Looks like they gave it to Juggernaut again. So DK, all they need to do, kill DP and then win the fight from there. So they should just focus, make sure... Mushi needs to make sure he gets his RP on the Death Prophet. She doesn't have a Ghost right now, so she's not that high priority of a target, but killing Juggernaut is kind of a waste. It's fairly difficult to kill him. If they silence him, he just Manta Styles. If they don't, he just played Furies too, so... It looks like DK, knowing that Exorcism's now on cooldown, ready to once again pressure this Tier 3. Bernie's going to lead the way himself, sticking his chin out above the steps of the Tier 3. Clockwork from behind. Finishes his BKB. Here we go, coming in from behind, and I actually... You're going to have to commentate because I'm disconnected from the server. Uh, we had Juggernaut come in with a uh, Omni Slash. Almost killed the Crystal Maiden. And looks like there's a hook shot on Andy Mage. He will die too. Lana comes in with a big Echo Slam. They pop the Aegis on uh, Luo. And they are hot on the tails of the rest of DK. Ice 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 is able to go swap before he gets silenced. So it looks like they will only... Uh, I guess it's a two for two trade if you count the Aegis. And most ultimates were blown there during that fight. Except for RP. Mushi really has not been hitting many RPs. We've seen the one solo bottom on the death profit but aside from that just it's not not many ultimates being used by him being very conservative about it this game didn't see what happened but see the rattlesnake came out ahead and unfortunately playing on perfect world servers or commentating on perfect world servers sometimes has its pitfalls just a reminder by the way that hopefully that won't be an issue kicking off at 9 a.m pacific time tomorrow as the western division gets underway uh, leading things off with a Navi and alliance both in action tomorrow so make sure you head to d2l.gg to check out our full schedule for that but for now, Rattlesnake continues to hold the line, able to fend off that assault at the Tier 3 and managed to, uh, even though it did cost him their Aegis, managed to do so without much loss. Now, at this point, Merlini, I mean, we're 29 and a half minutes in. Their lineup just isn't as strong as it would have been if they had peaked 10 minutes ago. Do they still have the push power to really capitalize on wins like that, or is it just about a forlorn hope right now? 
it's pretty forlorn. They're going for a long shot, going for this T1. The gold is like 10,000, but DK hasn't been picking that smart of fights. Like, I would much rather, if I were in their shoes, I would much rather pick a fight at Roshan. Oh, it looks like Luo is. Yeah, super dead. Over here. Got a little chest out, got caught out. And yeah. Right now, and the thing is, Rattlesnake, again, with their lineup, they they are not going to have the damage they need if any one person is missing. So even if they wanted to oh, try to... Oh, they might pick off one, two, one. Uh, unable to get him, actually. And uh, surprised, just didn't have cold snap skills, so Ice 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 unable to catch him. Trying to pursue people out, still getting some server lag, so sorry for that. In the meantime, Lanham caught out in the cogs, Icy popped his VKB, and might be able to make it away and will. In the meantime, Mushi not done, chasing down Sag, hot on his tail. Has a blink up in eight seconds, but uh, yep, there's a cold snap and the orchid going on to sag. And let's see, are they gonna pursue him? Doesn't look like they, look like they want to. Yeah, I, I mean DK, they I don't know what Alana was doing all the way up there by himself, getting caught by a uh, clock with a uh, cog. But I, I must say, Clockwork has been playing pretty well, aside from one missed hook shot. I think he's uh, just been yeah, as as the stats being pulled up, pulled, been involved in eight of nine kills right now, much more active than let's say someone like the Chen and Rattlesnake still trying to hold on. Oh, they're gonna catch him off with uh, with EMP. Now he's out of mana. Send him <laughs> home, Johnny. Sad little guy. Necro book done on a Crystal Maiden now. Twelve to nine, and again, I'm actually really impressed with Rattlesnake's ability to hold this together. I mean, it looked like DK was in a position to just run them over, and now we can see I mean, that they, they are. Though, like, I mean, look at Anti Mage though. He hasn't really been participating in fights. He had five thousand gold. He just bought something big, and that, that looks like it's the. Oh, he's just going straight heart. They don't have enough damage. I don't think to burst him down with a heart. Not with a Manta too. It's going to be a big problem. Yeah, the issue is, and you know, we talked briefly about it. Well, more than briefly, I mean. Basically, Rattlesnake's entire lineup is predicated on the idea of getting a lot of work done during a certain time frame. And they've done a great job at extending the game. The problem is they don't have any real hero on their side where you want to extend the game for them, while DK is happy to go as late as this game can. So really no way to win, and you, well, you hate to put oh, it that Death way. has a sheet, though. That's, uh, that's a pretty big changer. Yep. Especially with the Animage opting for the... Heart instead of the BKB. I agree with you though that like Rattlesnake has been extending the game, but why? Why do yeah. they need to extend the game? They haven't. I think they just had to play riskier early, and if it doesn't pay off, then you're just like, okay, well, we try it. But now it's like it's getting to that point where like, why are you 32 minutes in with only two towers down if with this sort of lineup? And DK on the other hand has six towers down. Um, and up here we go. RP gonna catch three. Skewer coming up. No, side the vice. This joints it. Can they get in? Off goes the poison Nova. Mushi will be cleaned up in the meantime. Exorcism going off. Burning though, just so tanky. No matter how much he's netted down, able to keep himself alive. Now going to work on Icy. They lost two for nil. So, and the Animage does end up dropping. So, unfortunately, hit with another lag spike in the middle of that fight. And I'm gonna try to reconnect to the server while Merlini breaks down what went wrong and how Rattlesnake keeps winning these fights. Two things went wrong in that fight. Firstly, there was no follow-up for the RP. They kind of expected him to skewer back, but it really clutched silence by Death Prophet, being able to silence him before he um, was able to skewer them back. So Magnus needs a BKB first and foremost, and that was just a really clutch Death Prophet silence. But also, Earthshaker wasn't there to follow up. He caught three people in the RP, Blink, Echo, uh, Fissure, and Enchant, and then the, the fight should be over there. Anti-Mage, he had BKB, but got omni out. He also blinked into the cog, so a slight misplay there by Burning and Rattlesnake still in this game, 12 to 12. And even though he has his heart, he just dropped very, very quickly. Merlini, my friend, continue the, uh, the oh. commentary. I'll be jumping right back in in just a moment. Ma uh, so Magnus finally has his BKB. Invoker not really able to do that much versus um, BKB. He needs the fights to like drag on a little bit longer or the initiation is simply to be better. Um, so Magnus, I mean, he went, he got forced that, but has it really helped him out that much? I mean, it's like decent versus Cog, but uh, again, IC is still playing very, very well. Always hook shotting, hook shotting Lana. Lana has to watch his positioning a little bit more. It's not like he doesn't have Blink. Um, so either just use smokes, like when you think a team fight's coming, so even if he gets hit by Rocket, he won't get hook shot, or just simply hide in the trees where um, he won't expect them to be. So Lana has to be closer to Mag. Um, needs to watch the positioning or use smokes. Mushi need a BKB before four staff. But now they finally have their items. They're kind of just like brute forcing Rattlesnake through um, a gold advantage and a team composition advantage. They're not really finessing them in the uh, post 25 minute part of the game, which is um, a little bit worrisome for me. 
It's still, are you still uh, trying to reconnect? Well, it looks like Hey, Merlini, AC... we're working on getting back into the game right now, so if you could just go ahead and hold okay, it down sure. the fort uh, on your own, we'll be right back in, okay? Sure, let me know. And Invoker has tornadoed, he finds the Luo, but Luo is very, very close to his butterfly right now, so Juggernaut, not the best late game, especially against Necrobooks and AAM uh, Manta Images, those will tank a lot of the Omni Slashes, but he's still doing very, very well in terms of farm, but his last hit's only 177 compared to Mushi's, or sorry, not Mushi's, Burning's 318 last hits. That is absolutely insane for 35 minutes in. And considering he's died three times and he hasn't even had the, any of the Aegises, so that's pretty darn incredible. His net worth is about 6,000 ahead of Luo, so it looks like they're pushing right now. Luo spinning on the tower, right-clicking at the same time. Death Prophet pops or goes right now. Are they going to engage? It does not look like it. Two people are split pushing top right now. We see Mushi from behind and Burning. I see forced to uh, TB back. Pops his BKB, but they still need more. And he just blinks away after Luo comes back. Looks like they're trying to pick someone off. On the meantime, Lanham tries to pick someone off, but Johnny sends the Death Prophet back. Johnny is still out by his lonesome, though. He has a TB scroll, but I don't... Oh, he might actually escape from this one? Nope. His uh, cold snap gets popped, so looks like it will be a one for 0 exchange. And DK comes out definitely ahead on that fight, especially when this T3 tower is at 850 HP. About half the HP taken off by that nice split push attempt from DK. And the item still kicking in for burning, but Juggernaut completed his butterfly. 300 gold right now, no buyback, and especially around the Roshan respawn, that could be a problem. And Roshan just respawn. I don't think that either team knows that it's up right now. DK uh, can definitely take it right now with no ghosts from 1-2-1 one, one, uh, for another 35 seconds, but they have to scout it out first. Uh, burning, meanwhile, farming middle, 3,600 gold. Butterfly should be his next item, um, especially since Juggernaut doesn't have an MKB. Um, it doesn't really help versus ghosts. It gives you a little bit of armor, but I don't think you can evade the... Sure. It hits and a little bit lucky by them. They use the alacrity on burning. Uh, it is scouted out by a rocket though. Burning this this is already a half HP. Rattlesnake has to do something very very quickly, but he has to hook shot in. This is about a quarter HP. Are they gonna follow in with icy? They don't have vision. He actually shot the rocket outside. There's the hook shot. Um, Deafening Blast comes out, Icy, BKBs, but he blocks his own team off with a cog. Oh, sorry, Looks like they're going to be able to take it out. Oh, that cog! And uh, Omni Slash comes out. Dyer actually gets the uh, Aegis and the kill. A big RP followed up by a big Echo by the Earthshaker. Johnny, meanwhile, cleaned up the process. Looks like there is just bloodshed everywhere. Um, but their sack actually revives. Or was it Icy? Icy actually revised. He catches Lon M and looks like Burning picks off uh, the Death Prophet. And after that bloodshed, looks like all in all it was only a two for, I guess, four exchange. Jugger or um, Clockwork lost his Aegis. So, so pretty good fight for DK. They um, have amassed a 12,000 gold lead at the fight. That fight was uh, pretty insane. I'm actually surprised that they didn't wait a little bit longer. But And the Cog blocked them off too, but a very nice uh, Omni slash across the Cogs to secure that Roshan kill for the Dire. And they've given them so many Roshans. Um, did someone have a uh, cheese that fight? I'm pretty sure it was a third of Roshan burning. Meanwhile, looking for... I'm still kicking in. For burning, but not completed his butterfly. No buyback, and especially around the Roshan respawn, that could be a problem. And Roshan just respawn. I don't think that either team knows that it's up right now. DK uh, can definitely take it right now with no ghosts from 1 to 1. Up for another 30 seconds, you can scout it out first. Uh, burning, meanwhile, farming at 3600 gold. Butterfly should be his next item. Um, it's just the Juggernaut doesn't have an MKB. Um, it doesn't really help this ghost. It gives you a little bit of armor, but I don't think you can evade the hits. And a little bit lucky by them, they use the alacrity on burning. Uh, it is scattered out by a rocket, though. Burning, this, this is already a half HP. Rattlesnake has to do something very, very quickly. But the hand shot is about a quarter HP. Are going to follow with the icy? They don't have vision. He has to shot the rock outside. There's no shot. Uh,
on him, and looks like Bernie picks off uh, Death Proc. And after that buzz, it looks like all in all it was only a two for, I guess, four exchange of or um, clock. Lost his ages, so so pretty good five k there. Uh, Massey, twelve thousand gold lead. That fight was uh, pretty. I'm actually surprised it didn't wait a little bit longer, but I did blow him off too. But a pretty nice uh, Omni flash across the cogs to secure that ocean kill for the dire hand. They've given them so many oceans. Um, did someone have a uh, cheese that? Fight. I'm pretty sure it was either a burning while looking for the on ID. Blinks over, um, but I was away. So now Tower Elf still. Uh, let's see, 6 and 3 in favor of TK right now. Rattlesnake, they're falling pretty far behind, but Orly has been sitting around the 12, 10 to 12. Um, 10 to 12 was a uh, mark for like the last 15 minutes. So they stopped the leading, but three games. I think there's a farm juggernaut versus a farm anti mage, especially anti mage that has like almost 9,000 in the network. And the anti mage uh, is just really, really bad. Uh, their, their line is not super, super, super late, that is impending. Any update, AZ? Okay, no. Um, does not look like he's coming back though. For all you guys on the Twitter stream, hope you can hear me, but I'll continue so that's what. The guys on Dota TV, and thank you all you guys for the support. Uh, couldn't have this tournament without you guys. And Illusion responds, I'm burn, looks like he's Illusion. pick it up. Um, I believe he has a neck eye coming out to him. He has a complete butterfly, not just his eagle song, complete fly out to him right now. So he is approaching six off very, very fast. He can play wild with something, and his power to boost travel. But this is what burn has 387 last hits in 30 minutes. So almost as I said, keep in mind for most of the game only ten or only eight creeps uh, spawn per minute. And, and so they're trying to get a smoke smoke right now is pretty risky considering they don't have an Aegis on them. But they can catch them by surprise, especially not one has to just not get a three stay on him. He's had one big echo, but only after RP is BKB. So this is not the way to take that. I don't think Rats can take a full file five, not when they're not spread out. They have this spread out all the way um, behind the tower back here, so they don't clump for RP for a very nice turn. Goes up into Echo. And I see two people over here with a board. They have the piece, but they're going to get picked off. Lem finds a good hit. Shea Fisher, both of them. Um, Johnny is able to send the clock back. Oh, Johnny with a very nice four step across, but Burning will be able to blink and match him out. So, Rattle Take, I don't know why they had three people TP back and two people with TPs not TP back. They have to be on the same page. Especially this late into the game. Chen, not biggest loss for them, but so they need everything that they have uh, to defend these towers and all their TP are uh, pretty easy now. Um, deep one low or autumn boys, but she tries to do it back, but it doesn't quite. Uh, I see she doesn't, but she was out the only slash go off on Bonnie. I mean, it's just right now. Oh, it's up already. We see it has already. Jesus goes walk. Uh, meanwhile, it's burning. She so, in a big, big echo file on him. Uh, he'll see people, including the Janat and the Death Prophet. Hope they can just clean up for burning right now. Just going by um, Venomous Scale. I see it looks like he's gonna be picked up, gets one in blink, and looks like Luo has a uh, bag, but he doesn't have anything up right now except for spin in. Man, that looks like it's into oh, that's like a very, very quickly. Uh, and a big RP that finishes things off as shoot. EGG burning with empowered just absolutely melted them. So five dead for a rattle snake. Uh, um, and it looks like Mushi and Burning are just <laughs> slowly but surely cleaning up the base. I'm surprised rattle snake has already knocked on me. This is going to be at least for a rack death profit and venom mixer. The first to spawn, but can they really take up uh, uh, burning with those boosts? I do not think so. And with them, power, this might just be mega creeps. Mushi can be having creeps. Should have come out a minute ago, but wow, what a pretty wompy conclusion to that. I'm like, once they actually hit a good repeat, once they actually hit a good repeat, I don't place for DA though. Oh, oh, Rattle did a pretty fantastic job of uh, uh, like pushing tour to 42 minutes. Mark. I thought the game was over once Anti Mage just got his man of Bath 3 and Vlaz very early, but I think that Mushi could have been better with RP. Magnus just doesn't see like his um, 
like type hero. He's very hesitant about his arcs. Yeah, one a good one. Bottom on the solo deck. And we're here, guys. So very sorry about that. The uh, I was unable to reconnect to the server because I screwed up. That was my bad. I went to reconnect to the server and accidentally misclicked and hit leave game instead of reconnect and uh, did the best we could through it with the Dota TV. And Merlini, I'm sure, in, in game uh, did a great job. I know the audio quality coming through Dota TV wasn't all that it could be, so very much apologize for that. And I guess if there's going to be a screw-up like that, I am happy it was in a game where DK was more or less fully in control, even though... Uh, some of the fights towards the end certainly were very exciting. So hopefully you guys at least got to experience the action uh, towards the end there via the Dota TV stream. Anyway, game one goes to Team DK, and one went away from essentially uh, all but guaranteeing Rattlesnake is not going to have a chance to play their way into our bubble playoffs coming up. And DK certainly looking to play their way into a top seed. And uh, as we get deeper and deeper into the Eastern Division, we'll talk more and more about the way the playoffs are going to be formatted and why seeding matters so much in that. If you don't know what a bubble race format is, um, we'll get into that again, maybe tonight some, but certainly looking ahead into the last couple of weeks of play. And once again, don't forget the Western Division gets underway tomorrow. Tomorrow starting at 9 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. It's actually not Daylight Time anymore. It's Pacific Standard Time and uh, noon Eastern Standard Time and our Eastern, uh, or our, I should say our uh, Central European friends, of course, are going to have much better time to watch Dota here at the D2L. So really look forward to getting that kicked off. You can find all of the details about that. Just head to D2L.gg. Check out the Western Division. Our full schedule's posted there. And all of the information you need about teams, players, so on and so forth. And, of course, if you missed any action here in the Eastern Division so far, check out the VOD section on D2L.gg as well. Once again, Team DK takes Game 1 against Rattlesnake. Rattlesnake going to look to force a Game 3, but DK's thinking shutout. We'll find out if they're up to the task. Coming up next, stick with us, guys. We'll be right back here on the HyperX D2L.